Have you ever wondered how the technologies that connect and protect power plants can contribute to operational costs? Hello, and a warm welcome to the world of electrification and automation in its Global Submit 2022. This is the unboxing session. My name is Luis Francisco, and today we have with us Edward de Planche, who is the Head of Portfolio Management of Generator Circuit Breakers at Siemens. Hi, Luis. Thanks for having me today. Hi, um, Edward. So, just before, as you won't be able to ask the question directly as we talk, please type them in in the Q&A box. There is a Q&A session at the end. So, well, how are you doing today, Edward? I'm doing well. Thanks, uh, Luis. I'm, I'm very pleased to be here, <clears throat> to be able to share with you about our generator circuit breaker portfolio. That's pretty cool. I mean, you, uh, you named this session the most reliable and sustainable vacuum generator, Correct. right? Circuit breaker. But what is a generator circuit breaker? Well, a generator circuit breaker is basically a medium voltage circuit breaker, mm -hmm. but um, its location is very specific. So. Mm -hmm. A generator circuit breaker is installed within a power plant and more specifically between the generators and its high voltage transformers. And <clears throat> with this location, it brings a lot of advantage and benefit for the customers. On the one side, having a GCB installed at a power plant increases the selectivity level of the power plant. And on mm -hmm. the other side, it helps protect the equipment of the power plant because this GCB at this location mm -hmm. is able to clear a short circuit current within tens of milliseconds. So okay. that's really an advantage for our customers, which mm -hmm. is then able to protect their power plant. Um, okay, I see. And, and I mean, what, what else is I mean, special about it? Well, it's quite a special equipment, especially due again to this location. So mm -hmm. we have a circuit breaker which is installed between two big equipment, mm -hmm. one of them being a generators which is a huge rotating equipment with a huge mass. And this, when you have a short circuit, the influence of the generators will somehow influence the shape of the short circuit. And okay. that has a huge, of, let's say, a big impact on, for example, the degree of asymmetry of this short circuit. That's one mm -hmm. of the biggest challenge a GCB has to deal with, is how to interrupt current, which, or short circuit current, which has this very high degree of asymmetry, even mm -hmm. sometimes higher than 100%, meaning that we have to break current which has no zero crossing. Okay. And that's a big challenge which is answered by a GCB on one side. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, what we have is a state of transformers which is a link between the network and the power generation unit. Oh, no. and, and this set of transformers, and when we have a fault which is fed through the set of transformers going through mm -hmm. our GCB, then this fault, or whenever the GCB is opening on a fault, mm -hmm. then what our GCB has to withstand, it's a very high, what we are calling TRV, which is standing for transient recovery voltage. So whenever we are opening the contact, clearing the mm -hmm. fault, right after us will come a huge voltage, which will try to restrict, because the mm -hmm. point it doesn't like it that you interrupt the fault. So it will try to restrict to reinitiate the fault. And okay. one, challenge again of the GCB is how to be able to withstand this TRV so we don't have any restrike. And that's quite uncommon for GCB because that's not what is happening on high voltage circuit breakers, for example, or even standard distribution circuit breaker. Okay, I see that they're actually very special and, and, and thank you for the clarification. Um, so they are there to uh, not only connect and protect, but to withstand such large Exactly. You know, short circuit current. Correct. Okay. And, I mean, going into that direction, now, now that we know that, mm -hmm. I mean, what challenges is Siemens addressing from customers with this technology? So, the way we see it at Siemens is <clears throat> our customers are expecting equipment which is reliable. Because mm -hmm. the GCB can be seen such as an insurance for the power plant. I'm mm -hmm. here to protect the main and most expensive equipment of the power plant. Yeah, sure. And, and from this perspective, what you want to have, it's a reliable insurance. You want to be sure that whenever you need it, it will be, it will be here. On the other side, having an insurance is good 
But what you are also looking at is to say, okay, what are the spending you will have over the lifetime? So what we call operational expenditures. And, and the last point for me, which is quite more and more present in all today's world, I will mention sensitivity. Mm -hmm. So I would say that the three, three topics that our customers expect from us to deliver. Okay. And <clears throat> if I go further with reliability, for example, I would say when we look at a GCB or any circuit breakers, this is mainly made from two different components, subcomponents. One of them being the drive mechanism and the mm -hmm. other being the arcing chamber. Okay. So both together are a circuit breaker. Um, what we tried to, did, uh, to do when we developed our portfolio is to get the most reliable on both sides, both worlds. So looking at the drive mechanism, we followed the guidance of the mm -hmm. Sigre report, which was mentioning as full spring mechanism being the most reliable one. And that's why all our portfolio is equipped with full spring mechanism, which okay. is allowing us to have a lifespan up to 20,000 close operation. 20,000? Correct, yeah. That's, okay. wow. that's really one of the highest uh, value you will find on the market, and it's really a benchmark here. And okay. on the other side, once we found out what was the type of drive mechanism we want, it was also to use a technology which will again bring to our customers a very high level of reliability and quality. And there, mm -hmm. thanks to Zimet experience on, on vacuum interrupters, we were able to use all the experience we have gained from the vacuum interrupters mm -hmm. and to use it for a GCB application. And as of today, I don't know if you know, but the vacuum interrupters has a very high mean time to failure. And I think last year we spoke about something like 83,000 years of mean time to failure, which is wow. really impressive. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, that's, that's one of the best. And, and really our, our, our duty yeah. as a Siemens is really to bring both together deliver it to the market okay. and use it as a GCB. So that's how we are, let's say, mm, touching this reliability part and how yes. we are delivering reliability to our customers. Yeah, I, I, I saw that you mentioned a lot about reliability and also the cost. So, uh, so what you're saying here is that the cost of ownership mm. of having this technology as part of the grid mm. is one of the things that customers are actually uh, getting a lot of advantage of. Correct. So, okay. One thing we, we are working with is delivering reliability is good. That's what our customers want. Yes. Um, the next step for us is to how we are able to translate reliability into benefit for our customers. Okay. And that's where we are even going further, trying to understand um, how this reliability we are gaining from using this drive mechanism and vacuum interrupters can be translated to customers in terms of benefit. So mm. one example I have today is um, I have one portfolio element called HB3, mm -hmm. which is there for very big power plant and uh, this equipment is able to be maintenance-free, mm -hmm. up to 10,000 interruption of rated current. Oh, okay. Meaning that over its lifetime, this mm -hmm. equipment can interrupt 10,000 times, up to 13.5,000 amps, without requiring any maintenance. Okay, so I, I, I see, I mean, when you th talk about it, I'm thinking about the new setup. I mean, there's a lot ongoing on the energy world, yeah. right? So we are in an ongoing energy transition. And, and I see that the technology could be actually helpful. Correct. Uh, to be part of it. Can you tell us something well, about it? As I mentioned, sustainability for all customers is key for the future. Yes. And uh, not only for customers, I think it's, it's quite common for everyone. Mm. And, and vacuum technology doesn't have any harmful gas inside. We speak about vacuum. Yes. And, and at the beginning of the design and the development of our product, uh, we had the choice, go with vacuum or go with what we have to call SF6 or sulfur hexafluoride, which is one gas which is quite common for circuit breakers. Mm -hmm. uh, the choice we did was not to use SF6. Um, I don't know if you know, Luis, but SF6 is one of the world's worst greenhouse gas. Yes. And it has somehow a, a very bad influence on, on the atmosphere or anything. I think it has 25, 23,000 times more potent than CO2. And that's one of the main reasons we said we don't want to use it and we want to go with vacuum. And when we look at it from today, it's easy to say, but um, vacuum brings together with reliability, um, help us to save our customers up to 75% of their operational expenditures thanks to its maintenance-free approach mm -hmm. and is sustainable. So that's the kind of full package we are not able to bring and deliver to our customer. Yeah, that's great. I mean, I, I really like um, everything what you say here, and thank you for sharing so much insight on the uh, uh, general circuit worker board. Um, I would like then um, also to, uh, you know, 
I will say wrap it up, mm -hmm. uh, considering that a generator circuit breaker uh, can be used not only in the, I will say, traditional power generation stations, but also on those distributed okay. ones. I mean, is there any final thoughts mm -hmm. from your side that you want to share with us? Well, um, the GCB market or, or the power generation market is, is moving mm -hmm. even more today with the new power generation mix and the introduction of, of renewable. Um, one aspect I would like to develop very quickly, it's the distributed generation, as you mentioned it. So mm -hmm. more and more to improve power plant efficiency, one good way of doing it, it's not only to deliver electricity, but it's also to use the heat which is generated to mm -hmm. deliver it to district, to the district. And um, there, to do this is quite challenging because a power plant is usually located outside of the city. You don't... Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> and, and it's difficult to bring the heat and transport it over a long time, or, or, along to another place. And um, that's a new challenge for our customers to say, I want to develop heat and XT power plant within a, a city, how to make it. So it always comes with a lot of constraint. First constraint is footprint. It cannot mm -hmm. be as big as before. So it's smaller, more compact. The electricity performance yeah. also is delivered, it's not the same. It's also a little bit smaller, more lean. Mm -hmm. And we as a GCB suppliers, we have to adjust our portfolio to match this requirement, whether it's in terms of footprint or in terms of electrical performance. So that I would say is, is one of the first approach we have on the generation market. And another one I, that we see more often today, it's um, application which are requiring very high frequency switching operation. Mm -hmm. And one of the most common we find in this direction is pump storage power plant. Pumps, I yeah. don't know if you know about pump storage power plant, Louis, but they are an application which is there to store energy whenever we have an overcapacity mm -hmm. and then to use this stored energy to generate back energy to the, market, to the network whenever we right. have a need for it. Right. And this is made like 10 to 20 times a day, mm -hmm. which is huge in our application. And when you think about having to switch back and enforce 20 times a day energy, <laughs> then you need a GCB which has to be there, which when you press the button or when the second edition happens, you have to get something which will close 100%. So reliability is important. And at the same time, as you are operating mm -hmm. quite a lot every day, you need to get some very high durability. You want to be sure that you don't need to change your GCB every year. You want something which will last for more than this. Again, mm -hmm. here we are developing this thanks to our reliability and durability. That's great, Edward. And I mean, I, I would like to thank you actually for sharing with us so much knowledge. Um, I, I know that you have a tight agenda uh, and that's why I really um, appreciate the fact that you are here live with us. You know, uh, I would like to check on some questions. Uh, let's see. Oh, we have a lot of questions actually here. Um, let me just pick some of them. Um, somebody is asking uh, about the standards. Um, what are the standards uh, for generator secret breakers? So that's a good question because um, that's the guideline we have for our work every day. It's referring mm -hmm. to the standard. So. Uh, thankfully for us, we have a worldwide well-known standard, which is a dual logo standard, which mm -hmm. is when you need to take your pen and maybe to write it down, but <laughs> it's quite a long one, but it's the IEC slash IEEE 62271-37-013. Um, mm -hmm. oh <laughs> yeah, no, the That's easiest huge. one to remember. <laughs> but for us, it's really the basic uh, guideline to, to, yeah, to get some recommendation and guidance about what we need to test, what, how we need to design it. And again, it's not only about the circuit breakers, it's, it's about the circuit breaker itself. So it's not mm -hmm. only about the arcing chamber, but it's also about the drive mechanism. So it's really showing us the way mm -hmm. and it's also having to levelize what our customers will also require from us. So they can always refer to the startup. Okay. I mean, I have, thank you for the answer. I have here an interesting question from SS. Um, uh, that person is saying, okay, uh, I mean, you mentioned something similar, mm -hmm. but can these CVs uh, be used in the transmission side of voltage, let's say up to 420 kB, or is it specific for gen the generation side? So we, we find some GCB on the transmission side. Okay. However, not where we expect to find them. 
So oh, really? as of today, you know, with the integration of more and more renewables on mm -hmm. the network, um, yes. this comes with some new challenge for our utilities. Mm -hmm. They have to be able to get, even though this is uh, intermittent energy mm -hmm. generation, we have to get some very strong and, and re resilient network. And to do so, we need always to get a proper frequency, a proper voltage, and this comes with a lot of challenges for them. Okay. And, and that's where we have a solution today, which is quite widely used whenever we have more and more photovoltaics, more and more windmills, which are integrated to our network, then we need to get still a short circuit power, which is sufficient to help the protection to detect it. We need to get, again, this reactive power, which is balanced and adjusted based on the need of the network. And there, one common solution is synchronous condenser. Mm -hmm. So basically, a synchronous condenser is just rotating mass, which yes, is helping yes. the network to get some momentum. And the connection between this minimum voltage equipment to the high voltage side is done again by GCB. And that's where we use our GCB to really, again, support the network with some more resilience, being more stronger, I would say. Yeah, that's perfect. I hope that you got your answer. And, uh, you know, when you mentioned synchronous condenser, I was myself involved in, in such projects in the past, reactive power compensation. And when you mentioned the flexibility of the technology, you know, whether it is a synchronous condenser, mm -hmm. it is used also in the medium voltage for power generators, but also there's a lot of applications in the high voltage. Okay. Now, in the context of the energy transition, I mean, this is definitely a key technology um, for, yeah, for the transition. Correct. That's amazing. Hey, that's, that's great. I like it. Um, let me see if there's uh, more questions. Actually, there's <laughs> plenty of them. Uh, uh, MI, please, what is the current rating? I mean, the range? Yeah. So I would say we have quite a comprehensive portfolio within Siemens, um, mm -hmm. which I would just bring the high hand because we are covering whatever is underneath. But yes. we have short circuit breaking capability up to 110 kA. Mm -hmm. We have rated current capacity up to 15,000 amps, mm -hmm. and we have a rated voltage again up to 24 kV. Okay. So, so that's quite comprehensive. Yeah, and, and sorry to interrupt you, but <laughs> and also we are having, I think we are one of the few which are having plenty of different solutions. So whether it comes to phase encapsulated solution mm -hmm. or to free phase encapsulation, this we are able to provide. and. Yeah, it's quite a challenging time every time to develop new portfolio element or to find new ways of serving our customers. Great. I mean, I hope that this is answering your question, MI. And I would like to uh, pick another question uh, because I saw one that actually resonates to something that you mentioned right now. Um, I mean, is there anything new hmm. in the portfolio? Something that is coming. This is coming from <sighs> GB. Yeah, so, well... Always. I mean, uh, it's our, yeah, our footprint to, to always so, Sorry for the question. Yeah. No, it's, it's fine. I mean, I, I'm just trying to figure out how not to give too much information, but still sharing what we are doing. So okay. um, I would say on one side, we have new tools that we are giving away to our customers. So one of mm -hmm. them being um, a sizing tool that we develop for our customers, supporting them to be like in full autonomy, to be mm -hmm. able to estimate what kind of GCB they will need. So that's an online tool which is on our website, and it's there to support them to technically, mm -hmm. let's say, define what type of GCB they need with a minimum of input from their side. Okay. That's the first thing. Um, then what we innovated, I will say, last year was also to support our customers, this time not on the technical side, but mm -hmm. on the total cost of ownership side, as you mentioned it earlier. So mm -hmm. what we have done is to say, well, when our customers has to choose between two technically equivalent um, technology, yeah. mm, when both are technically compliant, what next? And the what next for us is to be able to compare them over the lifetime. So what mm. kind of cost I'm going to face over the lifetime of my GCB? And to do and to support our customers, what we have done is we worked on what we are calling today a life cycle uh, cost estimation report Mm -hmm. Again, big name, but it's <laughs> ready to, to support our customers in evaluating different mm -hmm. technology over the lifetime. Mm -hmm. And that's really how we are, we are doing this with their input. So it's really project-wise we are doing this and based on their own operating condition. And from that, that's so the example, and that's, let's say, 
the reason why we are now able to say that we are saving so much of OPEX to their side, it's mm -hmm. thanks to this report, which is really comparing one to one what other technology are doing against, oh yeah, with, with vacuum on the market. Okay, okay. Right. And Hope for 4GB, that's a, that's a proper uh, answer. Mm. And I, I mean, out of all these questions, mm. I'm taking a last one now. Um, so I see one here from, uh, yeah, this one is easy. It's, I mean, could we receive the data sheet for this breaker? I think that <laughs> this is MW, MW, this is, this is yours. And then uh, CB is for AC or DC. So as of today, it's mainly for AC. Mm -hmm. Most of the generators we are delivering this equipment to are made mm -hmm. for AC. Okay. And, and today, just also coming back to your innovation, because I think I didn't answer it properly. I'm, I'm now feeling guilty <laughs> that I mentioned what we did, but not what we are going to do. So I need to come up on this. But I will say, looking at it, as of today, I think we have some kind of pioneers mm -hmm. and also leading this vacuum technology with our, our performance. Okay, Other 10K great. was a huge, uh, yeah, huge success for us. And, and of course, we always want to do more. Uh, that's, that's one thing which is common, I think, to Siemens' approach to the market mm -hmm. is how we can lead, how we can have a flagship, how we can be seen as the one we innovate. And that's where we are aiming to. So we have a portfolio which is today there. We always want to push it. We always think the ceiling is not high enough, so we want to, to break it. And mm -hmm. at the same time, we also want to, or we are willing to use the intrinsic um, advantage of vacuum. So if you compare vacuum interrupters to an SF61, you will see that the size of the vacuum is much okay. smaller than, than SF6 counterpart. And we want to use the benefit of that to say, this is generation, how we can support our customers. But mm -hmm. then also to think about, well, the vacuum is smaller. Maybe this can help to reduce the cost for shipment. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are also delivering equipment now within a container rather than having them packed and put them on a flat track container. Flat so track. Yeah. just again to support our customers. And well, I will finish with one thing, which is again, uh, some red line <laughs> I was discussing with you, which was <laughs> sensitivity. We yes. want to do more. Yes. And today we, we believe, to. yeah, we, we believe in a vacuum. Yes. Uh, we know vacuum is better than, than SF6. We are sure we can do even more. And I hope this will be the <laughs> opportunity for me to come back and discuss with you about it, Louis. Yeah, I thank you. Thank you, Edward. And, and, and to the audience, um, thank you all actually for your questions. And as I said, Edward, thank you actually for bringing uh, all that clarity on these topics. You mentioned something at the end that I, I also, you know, raise the flag is we need to do more in terms of sustainability. Um, for those questions, because there's actually many <laughs> still popping up uh, that are not answered, no issues. I mean, we're going to answer them afterwards. Okay. Remember that this session also will be uh, recorded. Uh, so it is recorded and it will be accessible just right after uh, all this ends. So that's all for all. Uh, thank you for joining and see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>